mystery is my hobby. Senor Robert, come in, please. Well, Morini, have you reached a decision? Uh, sit down, please. Pour yourself a drink. Never mind the drink. Hey, what's the matter with you? You're white as a ghost. Your hands are trembling. Has anything happened? Yes, yeah, see, Senor, much has happened. Pardon me, please. I think it's a small drink. Ah, such excellent wine. Like a breath from my native Espieto. Your native Espieto will have no breath at all unless you stop this shilly shallying around. Where are the papers? Papers? Look, Marini, quit stalling. Tonight is your last chance. Either you give me the signed agreements or I... Or you will disgrace my country. You will arrange it so that my government is deprived of its seat at the conference, eh? Don't think I can't do it, Marini. I don't make idle threats. Of that, I am sure, Senor Robert. For years, you have kept my country of Espieto under your thumb with threats. None of which were idle. Many of my people oh, have died. Oh, look, Marini, don't start all that again. I've already told you that the Roberts Amalgamated Rubber Company has agreed to pay you two cents more a pound for your raw rubber. You realize what that'll mean to your people, Marini? I realize precisely what it will mean, Senor Robert. It will mean that my people will be forced to continue living in virtual bondage. There will be no freedom of trade. We will be unable to take our rightful place among the nations of the world. Rubbish! This increase in the price of rubber means that the people of Estriator will prosper. All of them. They'll enjoy a better way of life. They'll be able to buy many of the luxuries you... For how long, Senor Robert, eh? A year, perhaps? Until the war with Japan is finished? <laughs> no, my friend, I listened to you once. I shall not again make that mistake. Are you telling me that you're not going to sign the agreement? That is exactly what I'm telling you, Senor Robert. Marini, you're a fool. When your people know that Robert's Amalgamated Rubber has offered two more cents a pound... My they... people are already aware of your offer, senor. What? Oh, so that's it. All this time I've been patiently waiting, you've been selling me down the river. Selling down the river? Another of your amusing American expressions, eh? No, please. I have no desire for an explanation. I'm quite content. Content? Huh. You don't look contented to me, Marini. You look half shot. Half shot? Explain that, please. Have shot. I don't like the word shot. With a gun, you mean, huh? Hmm. Maybe that's an idea. Marini, has Seymour been here tonight? Seymour? Jim Seymour, president of the Standard Rubber Company. That is a question I do not care to answer. Oh. That's how things are, eh? All this noble talk of the freedom of your people is a lot of hogwash. You've made a deal with Seymour. Senor, I have made deals with no one. My efforts have been devoted to drawing up a formula for presentation to the Latin American countries. What kind of a formula? A formula that, if ratified, will bring the inter-American security system into the framework of the World Peace Organization. So it finally got you, eh? All this ballyhooing about world peace has made you punch drunk. You believe I believe it... only that it is better to live in freedom than in bondage. I believe that self-respect is more important than the luxuries with which you're trying to bribe me. Bravo, bravo. I believe the basic purpose of this World Peace Conference is to destroy such money grasping men as you, Senor Calvin Roberts. It is you and all your kind who are responsible for wars. Well, well, well. Marini, I didn't think you had it in you. No, ah, there is much in me, and in all my people which you did not suspect, Senor. A man's pride is something you do not understand. Could be. Uh, this, uh, formula that you speak of, Marini? See, si. this formula, Senor Robert. Tonight it is here on my desk. Tomorrow it will be presented to the entire assembly. I see. Tomorrow a creator will assume her rightful place among the nations of the world. The Senor Calvin Roberts will have to look elsewhere for his robber. Poor but proud, eh? A noble sentiment, Marini. <laughs> okay, you win. I win. Marini, you're a smart cookie. I don't blame you for pulling a hold up when the chips are falling your way. Two and a half cents. Hold up, cheap, senor. I'm perplexed. You Three don't... cents. Is it possible that you do not... Believe... Three and one half. That's absolutely my top. So quit acting and be your age. I'm not kidding. Senor Robert, I am not acting, as you call it. 
There is nothing you can say or do that will change my mind. Now, now, wait a minute. Please, senor, I have much to do before tomorrow. Listen, Morini, you're not shoving me around. I've met guys like you before. I'm making you a legitimate offer you of... You can perhaps find it all yourself, or would you prefer I show it to I... you? Okay, Shaka. So you kidded me all along while you worked out your precious formula and sold it to the other representatives here at the conference. So I'm a dope. As you prefer, senor. <laughs> well, you're not going to get away with it, see? Marini, we've got ways of handling guys like you. Believe me, that formula you're so proud of will never be presented to the assembly. I think you are mistaken, senor. Mistaken, eh? <laughs> you see how mistaken I am. Operator, connect me, please, with the police headquarters. Ah, my friend, you have begun. I can see by the expression on your face that you think the gun in your hand will answer all the problems that confront us. Huh? No. There are others beside myself. The formula is... Oh. You cannot destroy. You cannot... No. Inspector, tomorrow we return to New York. I suppose you'll please. I can take it, all right. <laughs> you know, Bart, this isn't my idea of a peace conference. No, so? What's peaceful about it? Look at everyone, dancing and hooping and howling around. <laughs> These people that you see here, Inspector, aren't the delegates. They're the entourage. Come again, Bart, the end of the entourage. The entourage, Inspector, the people who came with the delegates. It's a colorful spectacle, isn't it? Yeah, the town's gone crazy. <laughs> you know, this morning on Market Street, I saw a couple of guys with towels around their heads wearing bathrobes. Inspector, those were Arabs. Oh. <laughs> yes, San Francisco has certainly given a gala welcome to the delegates. Hey. Hmm? Hey, Bart. Look at that pair over there with a tight fitting breeches. Yes, Inspector. They're Indians. Indians? I thought Indians wore feathers. Oh, this is exciting, Inspector. We're lucky to be here. There probably won't be another gathering like this in our time. Fifty nations are represented. Say. Huh? What's the matter? That striking-looking woman over there, the one near the palm tree. Now, look, Bob, never mind women. She's gorgeous. The way that white evening gown sets off her dark beauty is besides description. No. A Latin American, I'd say. Yeah, uh, well, don't say it too loud. She might hear you. And, uh... Inspector, something's wrong. Huh? The lovely creature's in trouble. Oh, um... Lady in distress, the old formula. Don't look now, Inspector, but I think... Yes, by Joe, she's coming our way. Ah, me. Here we go again. Can't resist him, can you, Bart? Inspector, keep quiet. Here she is. Forgive me, please. You are Senor Barton Drake. Why, well, yes, but uh, I'm sorry that oh, I don't... you would not know me. Please do not give up. We must not attract attention. I will sit here if you do not mind. I'm delighted. Please forgive me for saying, but... Such beauty as yours could not help but attract attention. Ain't she the one, though? I am Carmelita Jacinto. I have... Oh, it's a pleasure to know you, Senorita Jacinto. The gentleman across the table is Inspector Noah Benton. How do you do? Yeah. Senor Drake, I am in trouble, desperate trouble. How bad? What kind of trouble, Senorita? My cousin, Senor Alfredo Morini, Secretary of the Interior of our Republic of Estrieto, has been shot. Good heavens. Where is he? No, please do not make a disturbance. There is nothing we can do to help poor Alfredo. He is quite dead. You're sure of that? Positive, senor. The bullet entered his head and passed through his brain. I see. You have, of course, notified the police. They never think of that when Drake's around. Oh, no, senor. The police must not know. That is why I came to you. I uh, don't believe I quite understand this. I shall explain. The conference must be kept unaware of Alfredo's death until tomorrow night. Oh, so? Alfredo prepared certain papers, a, a formula for bringing the inter-American security system into the world yes. organization. I understood that Marini was working out some such plans. And all of the Latin American countries are depending upon the presentation of the formula at tomorrow's session. It means much to their future prosperity and happiness. Well, uh, look, little lady... 
why can't someone else present the formula? Oh, senor, that is why I have come to you. The formula has disappeared. Well, now, think of that. Senorita, you think whoever murdered your cousin did so in order to obtain the formula? But cousin Alfredo was not murdered. Oh? He committed suicide. Committed suicide? Why would he do that? What makes you so sure? His gun is still there in his hand if he's not over his desk. In a minute, she's going to tell us about the powder mine. You will help me, yes. Now, look, Bart, we're supposed to be on that plane tomorrow. Please, Senor Drake. On you, I depend so much. Well, um, since you put it that way, Senorita... Don't worry, Senorita. He will help. <laughs> This is the room here. Well, let's go in and get it over with. There is Alfredo at his desk across the room. Bullet hole through his head. Gun clutched in right hand. Yeah, and it looks like someone ransacked the place, too. Yeah. We were after the formula. Oh, you must get it back. It means so much. Just a minute, senorita. Yes? How do you know that the formula was stolen? Why... It must have been. Why? Because why else would anyone shoot poor Alfredo? It was the formula that... Senorita, a moment ago you were positive that your cousin committed suicide. Well, I... You have confused me, so... (laughs) Now I am sure of nothing. Uh, Bye, I'm beginning to smell something. Senorita, if you expect our help, we must have the truth. You... You shall have the truth, senores. Very well. Please tell us exactly what happened. Oh, there is so little to tell. I was in my room down the hall. I heard a shot. I came as quickly as I could and, and found Cousin Alfredo as you see him. You heard only one shot? Yes. Senorita, I'm afraid I can't believe your story. There are too many discrepancies. Yeah. For my money, this day been... Exactly. Huh? In the first place, there were two shots fired. The first, Miss Senor Marini, and that is the wall here behind him. Oh, that I did not know. That's your story. And in the second place, Senor Marini did not commit suicide. No? No. The bullet, as you can see by the powder marks, entered Marini's head from the left. The gun is in his right hand. But you got something there. Yes, Marini was murdered. Whoever murdered him wanted it to appear like suicide. Yeah, that adds up all right. Obviously, the motive for murder was the formula. Inspector, we're going to find out what became of that formula. Well, Inspector, let's, um... Assemble our facts. For my dough, there's only one fact to be assembled, that Latin No, babe. no, Inspector. It would get us nowhere to have Senorita Jacinto arrested. Why not? You already I proved... proved nothing, Inspector. It's quite possible the Senorita did hear only one shot. Now, wait a minute. There were two shots fired. We proved that. Yes, but did we prove when they were fired? The bullet hole in the wall could have been there for a week. Yeah. Huh? We had no evidence that the senorita shot her cousin and then placed the gun in his hand. Say, whose side are you on? Our chances of getting that formula back will be far greater if we arrest no one for the present. Finding the formula is the important thing, Inspector. Good idea. But who's got the formula? I think that one of three people has it, Inspector. Yeah? Mm Mm-hmm. I've been making some inquiries during the past hour. There are two gentlemen to whom it would prove decidedly advantageous to have that formula never presented to the conference. Yeah? Who are they? Well, one's a man by the name of Calvin Roberts. The other's named James Seymour. Both are manufacturers of rubber goods. They've been buying their raw material from Estrieto. And naming their own terms, eh? Yes, unfortunately. The people of Estrieto have been unable to benefit by rising prices in the world's rubber market. Sounds like a racket. It is a very profitable racket for Roberts and Seymour. Okay. Who's the third suspect? Senorita Jacinto. Now, wait, you just said... Inspector, I wish you'd do me a favor. I want you to step up to Calvin Roberts' room and have a friendly chat with him. And uh, what will you be doing? I, Inspector, have a date with a very lovely lady.
Yes? Oh. I beg your pardon. I'm looking for Mr. James Seymour. How nice. I'm Mrs. Seymour. Won't you come in? Thank you. My name is Barton Drake, Mrs. Seymour. I'm a private detective, of course. A detective? How exciting. Please sit down. Well, I... No, here in the divan beside me. There. Now, tell me all about it. About uh, what, Mrs. Seymour? Oh, about whatever it is that private detectives talk about when they call on uh, prospects. <clears throat> uh, your uh, husband isn't in, then? No. James flew to Chicago this morning. Frequently, he leaves me alone. You're quite sure that your husband left for Chicago this morning, Mrs. Seymour? Of course. Oh, I see. There's no danger of his returning unexpectedly, Mr. Drake. You're quite safe. <laughs> I'm afraid I've given the wrong impression, Mrs. Seymour. I really hope to find your husband in. Oh, how dull. I wanted to see him on uh, a business matter. How dreadfully dull. However, perhaps you can help me. Really? Possibly you've heard your husband mention a certain Senor Marini with whom he had some business dealings? Oh, but of course, Alfredo. We've known him for years. Really? Oh, he's such a dear. But then all Latins entreat me. They're so mysterious. Don't you think, Mr. Drake? Well, as a matter of fact, I haven't... Only last summer, James and I spent a month at Alfredo's Hacienda in Bolivia. Oh, so? Oh, it was delightful. There, um, there was a broad veranda overlooking the sea. We ate all our meals there. The Latins do so like the out-of-doors, you know. Yes. Mr. Seymour, tell me, did your husband happen to mention that he had uh, concluded a business transaction with Senor Marini before he left for Chicago? Business transaction? Yes. Mm, yes, I believe he did. It had uh, something to do with rubber. Yes, that was it, rubber. And Mr. Seymour was quite uh, satisfied with the details of the transaction? But of course, otherwise James would not have left for Chicago. I see. Have you talked to Senor Marini since your husband's departure, Mrs. Seymour? Why, no, I haven't. Why? Nothing, except for the thing... <laughs> I'm afraid that you seem to have another visitor. Oh, dear. Just when our little tater tape was becoming interesting. <laughs> Please don't disturb yourself, Mr. Drake. I'll get rid of whoever it is. Senor Seymour, I have come to ask... Oh, Senor Drake, come in, my dear. You know Mr. Drake? Not only do I know him, but I think also I know why he's here. Senorita, if you don't mind, I... But I do mind, Senor. This I do not like. I have hired you to work for me, and I find you making love to this. Making love? Now, just a minute. Oh, oh, I do think the poor dear is jealous. He's laughing. He's still you. I don't blame you, my dear, Mr. Uh, that is, Senor Drake. He's attractive. Fast in another moment or two, Mr. Right? Seymour, before we carry this any further, there's something you should be told. Oh, how dull of you, Bart. And really, you don't have to explain. This child has been jealous of me for years. You be still. Yesterday, she accused me of flirting with Alfredo. Imagine why Alfredo was old enough. Alfredo, to... Mrs. Seymour, is dead. What? He was shot early this evening. Oh, no, I don't believe it. Can't be so. You are so shocked, Senora. I wonder if your husband would also be shocked at the news. What do you mean by that? Nothing. Except that I have learned that Senor Seymour did not leave for Chicago this morning, as he told. He did not leave until an hour after the death of Cousin Alfredo. Well, that's ridiculous. I saw him off my stand. That is one lie. Of this, I'm sure. Now, just a minute, Robert Noble. Keep away from me, Truth. I'm settling this thing right now. Which one of you is Barton Drake? The brunette. Very funny. Are you Drake? Yes, I'm Barton Drake. You must be Calvin Roberts. That's right, Calvin Roberts. Listen, Drake, call off your bloodhound here. Are you referring to Inspector Danton? Inspector? Who, him? Yeah, me. Huh. I tried to tell you, but you talk too much. Ha oh, ha, you were always so loquacious, Calvin. Keep out of this, Ellen. What's this all about, anyhow? What's the police inspector want to question me about? You're sure you don't know? Of course I don't know. Senor Roberts knows very well. It is he who stole the formula. Formula? What formula? Look, will someone tell me Someone what has already told me that you were in my cousin's room just before he was shot. Shot? Maureen? Oh, come, Calvin. Stop pretending you're so unconvincing. Oh, yeah? You keep on talking, Ellen, and I'll tell him about Jim Seymour. Things had nothing at all to do with this, Calvin. Me? I think they are all guilty. Now, we're getting places. But all we have to do is give this bunch enough rope and they'll hang themselves. The hanging is all over, Inspector. Huh? What are you talking about, Drake? The Inspector and I have been playing a little game, Mr. Roberts. Ah, nonsense. This game playing I do not like. I'm so excited. Tell us about the game, Barton. It's not much to tell. People who are guilty of a crime and pretend innocence usually get caught in their own trap if allowed to talk enough. 
Great. Do you mean that one of us has said something that would uh, indicate a guilty conscience? Precisely. I don't believe it. This is not what I expect. Of course, you didn't expect it, darling. The guilty never do. You are accusing me. Okay, Drake. You're so smart. Who's got the formula? Inspector Danton. It's in his pocket right this minute. There you are. Huh? More than that, the inspector can also put his finger on evidence that will prove conclusively who murdered Signor Marini. Maybe you know what you're doing, Bart, but I don't. Uh, what are we going to do? Sit here in our room and wait for the murderer to come along and give himself up? Hmm, it amounts to that, Inspector. Look, let me in on the deal, will you? Uh, you said I had the formula in my pocket. Have you looked in your pocket? I looked in Of course I haven't. Well, why don't you look? Are you telling me? All right. Just for a laugh, huh? Be sure I... Jumping, Judas, what is this? Well, it looks like a folded piece of paper. How'd that get into my pocket? What is it? What? Listen to this. It is the pleasure of the Republic of Estrieto to... Very well, gentlemen. I'll take that paper. Jumping Judas and Robert. Yes, and with an ugly-looking gun. Robert, I'm surprised. <laughs> I thought you'd be. Drake, you're a fool to stick your nose into other people's business. All right, Sleuth, hand over that paper. Wait a minute, big shot. Carrying a gun is serious business. Shooting a gun is much more serious. If you find out, unless you give me that paper. Before you take the paper, Roberts, I suggest you look behind you. Oh, come, Drake. Isn't that trick a little out of date? Oh, so big it might be, but still it works. Your gun. Drop it, please, senor. Well, if it isn't the little Latin beauty from Estrieto. My dear, you make a charming picture holding that pistol. It gleams like the angry lights in your eyes. You will drop the gun, senor. Before my pistol spits like the mouth of a rattlesnake. All this pretty talk and nothing happening. Now, who's going to shoot who? Look out, I'll show you. Here we are, Inspector. Get your gun on. We won't need a gun for this job. Why, Barton... Back again so soon? Yes, and for a very good reason. All right, Mrs. Seymour, I'll take that formula. Formula? Well, Inspector has it, you said. No, my dear. The paper that Inspector Danton found in his pocket, I placed there myself. Placed it there yourself? But I, I don't understand. I'm afraid you understand quite well, Mrs. Seymour. I'm surprised to find that you're still here. Well, why shouldn't I be? Perhaps you hoped that either Carmelita or Roberts would kill us when they came looking for the formula which they thought we possessed. This is ridiculous, and you have no proof that I stole the formula. Not only have we proof that you stole the formula, we have proof that you murdered Senor Marini. I don't believe it. You're, you're trying to trick me. Mrs. Seymour, you were the only one who knew that I was lying when I said the formula was in Inspector Danton's pocket. You knew it because you had it yourself. You see, it was a gag Bart and I dreamed up. We knew that the two people who didn't have the formula would come looking for it. You weren't one of them, so we... Of all the dirty tricks. Your husband, Mrs. Seymour, was picked up last night in his hotel in Chicago. It was smart of him to leave you to do the dirty work, but not very gallant. I understand. I'll clear you win. There's nothing I can do but hand over the stolen goods. Now, that's smart, lady. I have the papers here in my purse. Inspector, she has a gun in that purse. You said I have break. Now, get this, you two. <laughs> and shot the gun right out of her hand. Will these dames never learn that guns are made for men? Well, Inspector, we caught the plane after all. Tomorrow, we'll be in New York. Yeah, New York for me. Hey, Bart, hmm? do you figure we did our bit to help the peace conference along? Well, we... Got the formula back. Estrieto will get a break in world trade from now on. And something. There's one other thing. What's that? How, how were you so sure that that Seymour babe was a pony? Oh, well, that, that was the yarn she told me about being entertained at Alfredo Marini's hacienda in Bolivia. She said they used to sit on the veranda and look out at the ocean. No veranda? No ocean. Bolivia has no coastline, Inspector. But you have a hobby. Yes. Mystery is my hobby. 